I say good morning, Fitzroy, but you listen at different times. Whatever time you're listening, wherever you're listening in the world, whether you're a member of Fitzroy or whether you're one of those we now call associate members because of this lockdown and online potential possibility and resource, we welcome you. A very, very good day to you. And we hope you'll enjoy the music of our worship, which will be done by Paul and Talitha Bowman today. And we hope that you will uh, hear God speak to you as we hear his word and reflect upon it. I'm going off on holidays right at the end of this service. So once you hear the benediction, I will be gone. Um, but we will still be here online and we are quite excited about those that are coming up to speak to us. Next week, we have Ross Lockhart, who's a friend of Fitzroy and has preached in Fitzroy a few times. Ross is from British Columbia in Canada. He is the Associate Professor at St Andrews Hall in the University um, of British Columbia. I think we stayed in St Andrews Hall for two nights when I was on sabbatical before we got into our apartment. And Ross, he will really stimulate your thinking and bless you in the service uh, next week. Ross and Laura have been watching every morning when they get up in British Columbia. They have been watching the services and so we feel they're a part of us and we hope you will feel that um, next Sunday. The week after that we have Paul Lutton who's one of our own elders but uh, is currently uh, started his student assistantship for the ministry in Kirkpatrick Presbyterian Church uh, across uh, Belfast. We're delighted to have Paul back again rich in thought and theology and I'm sure uh, he will speak into your life. Cheryl Mabin, who is the chaplain at the University of Ulster, uh, she will speak the week after that. And Cheryl, again, is um, a woman full of ideas and spiritual uh, edge. And um, I know that you're going to enjoy Cheryl. And then Paul Bowman, who's our youth director, who uh, spoke just a few weeks ago when I was recovering from my gallbladder operation. And the first online Fitzroy service to reach over a thousand hits. Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't me that you went back and back and back to. It was Paul, which is a good plug for his service. And then I will be back right at the end of August, hopefully refreshed and ready for whatever is next. And who knows whatever is next. But as I remind those of you who have come in and uh, really seem to enjoy and be blessed by our services online, when we get back into the church, whenever that is, we will not be losing the online ministry. I want to also, just before I go on holidays, thank the team behind the uh, the cameras, behind the production, um, for Alison Coote, who sees me every Saturday lunchtime and sometimes, like last week, is with me for longer than she would like to be because I take so many goes at the sermon. Um, for Richard Guthrie, for Colin Goodman, for Peter Greer, who put these services together during the week and sometimes... I don't get them the stuff early enough and they're a wee bit stressed or whatever else, but they do a great job and we're so thankful um, for them. And I want to take this chance before I go off to do that. OK, let us be still and be ready to worship God. Last week, Lord, we thought about you as the rock. A refuge, a shelter in times of trouble. We went on to Bally Castle Beach with the shifting sands of the moil tides and that rock just out from the shore. And we come in that shifting sands of the week that we've had and we seek you, our rock, to worship you and to hear from you, to sense your love. May it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. See you. 
reading is taken from Matthew chapter 13 verses 31 to 33 and also verses 44 to 52. The parable of the mustard seed and the yeast. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of your seeds yet when it grows it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. The parable of the net. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into a lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old.
Aletha. I think she's 15 this week. And uh, congratulations on that. But what a talent. And I love it when she does those Laura Daigle songs that are so rich at the moment and are not only speaking into a church community, but are getting under radio uh, across the world. And the song chosen by Talitha there, it's just, it's just pretty spectacular into the times that we're in. No times it seems like I'm coming undone. This walk can often feel lonely, but no matter what, until the race is won, I stand my ground where hope can be found. Your strength is found at the end of the road, your grace it reaches to the hurting. Still through the tears and the questioning why, I will stand my ground where hope can be found. Last week I spoke about that rock. I mentioned it at the outset of the service. It seemed to capture people's imagination. Um, so many people come back and say, oh, I'm going to go back up and see that rock in Ballycastle. And um, other people come in and remembered that rock. Um, and this week we had a crab fish and we caught one apparently. Um, but there was quite a number of us on the beach. In fact, if it had been counted, we may have been over the legal number of people meeting on Ballycastle Beach uh, at the crab fish. And as we walked out, many people said, oh, we knew we were in the right place because we walked past the rock. It seemed to just capture imagination. So in the light of that, I suppose as I was churning or turning over the text of this week's lectionary that Kim read for us earlier, I was thinking about similar images. So I want to take you two miles from the rock on the beach, two miles inland. If you actually look from the rock, uh, well, you might have to walk down towards the town a little bit. But if, if you look back across to the left of the of Ballycastle town, uh, on the hill, you will see a forest. And as Janice and I walk the beach with Jed, we love walking the forest because we feel that that gets us fitter because it's straight up. It's on the foothills of Knocklade, but it's it's a it's a track. And when you're when you're in the forest and you're churning over the parable of the mustard seed, there's got to be something that will 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 interest you. So I was thinking about that parable of the mustard seed that we read earlier. And I was thinking about it as I was walking through the forest. Now, I need to be strict to the detail here. Over the last year, they have they have taken down many of the trees in the forest. And the trees that they've taken down happen to be the closest ones to the walk that we do. Um, but last year, if we'd have been walking the same way we walked this last week, then we would have been walking through a canopy of trees. And that's good in Northern Ireland weather, as you recognise, because it rains. And so the, the trees would have kept us dry from the rain. It was, it, But you, you find yourself in the gloom. Um, the sun was certainly pushed out. Um, but that's the forest. And so I considered... What would it be like in the denseness of the forest, the places that Jed goes off the track and I'm slightly concerned that he goes in too far and meets a deer and the deer uses the back heels to kick him back to us with a wee bit of damage, to, to go in under that undergrowth, to go right into the middle of Ballycastle Forest and to throw out a mustard seed. Oh, it would be lost. You, would, you wouldn't even find it among the pine needles. You wouldn't even find it among the undergrowth. And then the deer would come and trample it in. And if you thought about it, a mustard seed in the middle of Ballycastle Forest with all that spectre of trees and darkness, a mustard seed would be surely insignificant and useless. Jesus is telling us in this parable that that is not the case. That this mustard seed of the kingdom of God is really quite incredible and will flourish. Now, I'm thinking that Jesus may be talking about himself here. Because let's think about that for a moment. You have the Roman Empire and all its brutality and its omnipresence in the world at that time. And it's oppressing everything like the high trees in the forest would bring the darkness surrounding you. You're under a canopy and it's not a pretty canopy of Roman Empire. And you're a baby born in a manger, left in a manger in Bethlehem. You're a refugee on the run to Egypt. You're a carpenter up around Capernaum and Nazareth 
for 30 years you do very little but debate with those in the temple. How insignificant Jesus must have seemed in the world that he was living in. Who was worried about this Jesus? Yes, in the end, they killed him and they had to kill him because he was such a revolutionary that the world could not deal with who he was and what he was about. He threatened everything. Yes, Herod tried to kill him early on. And yes, Pilate washed his hands of him. But to be quite honest, I'm not sure that too many people, as they saw him walking about the streets with his disciples, would have been saying, well, he's going to bring the world down. Mustard seed. An insignificant birth in Bethlehem. A seemingly insignificant death in the many deaths across the Roman world. And yet Fitzroy and right across the world believers who are watching today because that mustard seed has grown into this kingdom and will continue to grow. Oh, the kingdom of God is here and yet to come. And it's that mustard seed seemingly insignificant that is growing into this story that will find a culmination further down the road. And maybe as we turn from Jesus to ourselves, maybe we have felt insignificant during coronavirus. Maybe we have felt a wee bit like a mustard seed in the middle of Valley Castle Forest. Maybe some of us were literally isolated. We were on our own. We had nobody to see or converse with across a table or across a room. Maybe there was deep anxiety and maybe we felt less than the humanity we should feel. And it's good in those times to realize that the insignificant can sometimes be the flourishing. And no matter how we felt or feel during these anxious times, that we are part of this story of a tree that is going to burst through Valley Castle Forest if we see the image and that the birds of the air and the world is going to be nourished from this insignificant seed that becomes this incredible kingdom of eternity. And then, of course, well, let me, before I get to the, of course, say that as I walked around Valley Castle Forest and I considered the mustard seed in the middle of the undergrowth and the overwhelming specter of the darkness around us could be the world that we're living in as well and we might come to that. I, I was drawn, as oftentimes I am, to a song. Uh, it was a song by my friend Martin Joseph. It was actually written by another friend of mine, the lyrics, Stuart Henderson. Stuart's a poet and boy he's a good poet and Martin and him have written many songs. And this one is called uh, Yet um, uh, Yet Still This Will Not Be. So it's saying that the, the forest's enveloping us, that there's a specter booming down on us, maybe cutting out the light, but there's it's not going to be that way. It's not always going to be that way. And we have this hope in the mustard seed of the gospel. Now, my words, the mustard seed of the gospel, not Stuart's. But here is one of the verses, and we're going to come back to a couple of verses before the end here. The opening verse would you believe it? You couldn't write it. The trees are great with summer, but the sunrise seems much colder. We're teaching brutal lullabies and nurturing child soldiers. With munitions from our factories, we're sending them our best, a metal sash of bullets to wear across their chest. Ah, this will not be, though all around is rage. The story getting darker with each turning of the page, yet still this will not last. This kingdom of the fool will be humbled and made low when the broken hearted rule. As I listen to Martin's song, I can see the mustard seed beginning to grow and the tree of the kingdom coming in. There's four other parables in this little pericope from, from the lectionary that Kim read. And I'm not one to talk about all of them, um, but I, I do want to talk about the, the ones about treasure. Um, two merchants, two people who are into their treasure and into their wealth, I think, in the parable, find this treasure. The second one, a pearl, and sell everything in order to get the treasure that they've seen. And again, can I go into the forest and suggest that the pearl 
is just thrown like the mustard seed somewhere into the undergrowth. And that pearl lies there hidden, maybe underneath the pine needles or maybe underneath all the other undergrowth that's happening around it. It's maybe dragged here and there. This pearl, this pearl that's beyond price is lost in the envelopment again of the forest. And I'm thinking at the moment of the forest of materialism and consumerism. There's another pearl. And these guys who are probably into their consumerism and materialism of their day, they find this alternative pearl. This pearl that Bono and you two sing about as being in perfect condition. This pearl that is Jesus, that is Jesus' grace, that is Jesus' incarnation, that is Jesus' cross, that is Jesus' resurrection. This alternative way to live life, lost in the forest of the world around us. Images dominating us all the time to buy, buy, buy. Janice and I cannot believe that in my Facebook page, if I type in a book, Betty McDowell gave me a, a clue as a, about a book today on Facebook, and I immediately typed it in uh, to, to Google. And once you seem to press something in, all these trees start to come down upon you and bombard you with offers of things that are similar to that. We live in that kind of a world that is saying to us, you need this, you want this, you have to have this, you want more and you want more and you want more. And there in the middle of that forest of consumerism, these business guys, girls found a pearl, something even greater than that. Something where what good is it to gain the world if you wouldn't have that? What good is it to have the wealth and the things of the entire forest if you miss this incredible pearl lying hidden in the forest floor? Martin Joseph sings in the same song, yet still it will not be. And narrow is the access to our strong rooms and our vaults as we toast our toxic riches and reinforce the bolts. And we'll film you and your wasting bones, your dignity and pride, and we carry on expanding our bankruptcy inside. Yet still this will not be, though all around is rage, the story getting darker with each turning of the page. And yet this will not last. This kingdom of the fool will be humbled and made low when the broken hearted rule. Oh, I wish it was a singer, but you probably don't. So today, as we come to conclude some reflections in these parables, let me ask you, let me ask myself, but I have been asking all week, what is our forest? What are the trees that seem all consuming? What are the trees that seem to be just lurking to get us? That have us hidden in the gloom and the doom and the shadows. What are those trees? It may be illness. It may be tests you've had or are having. It may be deep, drowning grief. It may be the uncertainty of this coronavirus thing. It's whether we wear masks or whether we don't wear masks or where we should use masks or how we social distance or are those people social, socially distancing? Where am I safe? When will we ever get back to church? COVID anxiety, COVID weariness. Maybe the divided Northern Ireland that one side wants the English to stay out and the other side wants the English to stay in. Well, we've been fighting that one for seven or eight hundred years. But there are forests of things that can make our lives seem gloomy and, and shadows. The world of injustice and hunger and war. All of these things. But there is a kingdom. There is a kingdom hidden like yeast in the dough. It's going to come through and give us a 10-10 life in all its fullness. Like a mustard seed in the forest, like a pearl. Here it is, the kingdom of God. And Jesus offers it to us. Jesus says that it is him, because in him we find this grace and mercy and peace. And I guess many of us, as you've uh, wonderfully connected with me after Sunday sermons, over these last few months, have talked about not wanting to go back to that old normal. And we've talked about that an awful lot. What is the pearl we found during these days? And what is the pearl we want to hang on to? 
because there is a forest ready to envelop us immediately. The kingdom of God is this alternative world. The kingdom of God has got strange ways. The kingdom of God started with a baby in a manger and it is flourishing across the world and will continue to flourish until ultimately, yet still, this will not be. Back to Laura Daigle that Talitha sang at the start. Though times it seems like I'm coming undone, this walk can often feel lonely no matter what until the race is won, I'll stand my ground where hope is found. Maybe in the insignificant, believing in the mustard seed, holding on to the pearl. And let me finish with Martin and Stuart, yet still this will not be. And still this will not be, Though all around is rage, the story getting darker with each turning of the page. Yet this will not last. This kingdom of the fool will be humbled and made low when the broken hearted rule. There's a journey that's now calling towards the ocean's heart. It's an offering of mercy where we play a selfless part. We leave our treasure by the roadside and our trinkets in the dirt, giving back life and ruby riches to the ruined and the hurt. That is the kingdom. Let us seek it in the most insignificant and let's be part of its flourishing in our streets, in our towns, in our cities, in our nations and in our world.
And as we did last week, and we've done a few times over these coronavirus times, our prayers are going to be offering, offering ourselves to God, recommitting for the week that is ahead. So let us pray. Lord, we come before you having been dragged through the days of a fallen world. Constant coronavirus news, shifting the sands of where we are and where we might be going. News of a world where power seems to be graceless, where consumerism is all consuming, leading to a world of injustice and poverty for so many. And Lord, we personally know the fallenness within our own lives. We have things to smile about this week, but things that bring us down. We have things to celebrate, but there are many things to mourn. We have things to look forward to in the week ahead, but many things that have us worried and anxious. And in all these things, it makes us who we are today. And we come before you as we are to commit ourselves to you afresh. Lord, we seek that mustard seed and your flourishing kingdom. Lord, we seek that pearl in perfect condition. And Lord, as we come before you, we have been inspired by the words of Jesus and confused by the devil's lies. We have been praying hard for holiness, but seduced by temptation sparkle. We have prayed for eternal impact on our souls and been blunted by momentary distractions. And it is all these things that make us who we are today. And we come before you as we are to commit ourselves afresh. And as we come as we are, we are amazed at your grace and thank you for your mercy because you know us as we are. And you still love us. Lord, at this moment, no matter where we are geographically and no matter where we are spiritually in this place in between what we want to be and who we are, you cannot love us any more than you do right now. And so here we are, thankful for your love, thankful for that pearl in perfect condition, and we commit ourselves afresh to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
curse the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, oh, we live for you, holy. There is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Thank you again for watching Fitzroy's Sunday service. I sometimes say this morning, but people listen to it in the afternoon. There's people listening all over the world at different times. So thank you for uh, watching again. And thank you for watching us down through these last months. We're not going away, but I am for a little bit of a break. And I want to uh, just thank you for uh, giving us the time and using us as a resource um, through all of this. As we share a benediction, I'm going to use a benediction that I've been using for maybe 30 years and one that seems to resonate with people. So let me share with you. God, give us faith to believe the truth and the right at times to ask why. Lord, give us joy in life's fulfillment and the right at times to cry. God, give us the strength to carry one another and the right at times to be the one who wilts. God, give us your grace towards your holiness, and the right at times to confess our guilt. Father God, show us a bigger picture. Lord Jesus, add grace notes to our song. Holy Spirit, accompany us on a road that's deeper and more eternal than the one we've been on. Amen. Amen. Janice, pass me the novel.